Welcome to the Ware Historical Society's 250th Pine Tree Riot Anniversary. And we're calling this a commemoration and a celebration, because it is definitely worth celebrating. So, um, the best of both worlds here. 250 years, plus and minus a couple of days, it's a pretty significant date. Uh, the Ware Historical Society is uh, hosting this event, and we were formed in 1971 uh, with the mission of collecting and preserving records and artifacts relating to the town of Ware, to provide assistance in protecting historical sites in town, and today to encourage and study the, and appreciate the local history. So we have, we have a pretty good local history here, and it's, we're really proud of the fact that the Pine Tree Riot happened in Ware. We're celebrating a significant event in American history that took place about five or six miles away in our hometown. Few places have the privilege and it must be respected and celebrated. I want to briefly introduce the Ware Historical Society Board of Directors. Uh, without them, this would not be possible. Our president is Sherry Burdick. You could raise your hand. <laughs> Uh, my name is Tom Flaherty. I'm the Vice President. Our Secretary is Jan Snyder. Right back there. She's uh, selling Historical Society uh, merchandise today at her table. And our Treasurer is Mike Haas. There he is, right there. A former President and Director and Historian is Betty Straw. Betty's right here. Betty's 97 and she comes to every meeting. Ninety-six. Okay. I am now not the vice president of the historical society. Uh, we have some other directors too. Neil Kirk is, I think he's the judge up in the play later on. So you'll see a guy with a wig on. Is he here? No. They're rehearsing still, feverishly. Matt Blair, is Matt here? No, nope, Matt's not here. Rhonda Gregg, she's in, oh, there she is. And Rhonda's uh, doing the kids craft, uh, supervising the kids craft, which, uh, which is in the library over that door over there. We moved it indoors. Uh, director, another director is Terry Winowski. Did Terry make it here today? No. Okay. And, uh, Director Helene Kirk, and I believe she's up at the play as well. Uh, and I want to mention that Helene just recently... Oh, oh, there's Helene over there. Helene was, she was our treasurer for 11 years, and she just transitioned that to Mike. So 11 years is a long time. We appreciate it. Um, I'd also like to introduce a couple other special guests um, and talk about uh, briefly our sponsors. So we have some state representatives here. I know Keith Erf is here. There's Keith. Uh, did Leah Cushman make it? I haven't seen Leah. Is Gary Gary here? Gary Hopper? Nope. And our state senator is Ruth Ward. I saw Ruth there. So we next to Gary. Right next to Keith. And we also have another special guest who I'm going to talk about talk about a little bit later is the Hillsborough County Sheriff Christopher Connolly. Right over here. If you know the Pine Tree Riot story, then the Hillsborough County Sheriff may ring a bell. I assured him he's safe today. He's here. <laughs> uh, this event was made possible by 
believe it or not, 24 business sponsors who stepped up and, and donated to the event. So everything here today is, uh, is a result of their donation, their generosity. Um, some of them are working on thin ice after the past couple years, and yet they managed to still give uh, donations. And, and, you know, a couple of restaurants, who are, they're, they're having, you know, they're recovering, but uh, they, they gave as well, which is very appreciated. Um, yeah. So all 24 sponsors are in the booklet that was handed out when you came in. If you didn't get an event booklet, it's in the red tent behind you. Uh, please get one. We have 300, so it's a, it's a nice little token. But every sponsor has their business logo in there, um, you know, small and large sponsors. So, But I do want to mention uh, Ebenezer Mudget level sponsors. So mm -hmm. these are businesses that gave us $400 or more. Um, and. And uh, it's worthy of mentioning them because they really gave quite a bit. Uh, it, most of these are wear businesses, some are not. Allied Auto Wrecking, Cold Springs RV, uh, Kunkanoa Hills, and that was uh, Bill Bovera gave $600, which was great. Um, Mount William Inc., Pelletier Realty Company from right down the street. The Stark House Tavern, that's one of the restaurants I told you about. The American Legion Post 65, which is behind us. Um, they were the first ones to donate, and uh, Birch Hill Technology Group and Abel Ebenezer Brewing Company. So, thank you very much. So, uh, in, yeah, they're in the booklet, and if you uh, see any of them or you go to their businesses, tell them thank you for helping the Pine Tree Riot celebration. We also want to thank the many volunteers who worked on our committee to help make this event possible. There's about 15 people here all working to help. There's about that many on the committee as well. They're all listed in the booklet too, so please take a look at that. And the play, there's about 25 cast members and maybe seven or eight. 30, 35, 40? 30? It's a big group. It's a lot of people up there. Heidi did all the costumes, so. Um, so we want to thank everybody who contributed their time and effort. Um, we have, uh, we have a, a proclamation and a resolution that we'd like to read here, and I'd like to bring up State Rep. Keith Thurf and State Senator Ruth Ward. Hampshire commemorates the 250th anniversary of the Pine Tree Riot, an event that helped set the stage for the American Revolution. And whereas several log cutters from the town of Ware, including Ebenezer Mudgett, were fined for cutting illegal logs from white pines without proper licensing and without marking them for the king. And whereas these patriots openly defied the charges set forth by Hillsborough County Sheriff Benjamin, <laughs> Benjamin Whitting Esquire and his deputy John Quigley and refused to pay the fine. And whereas in an act of solidarity, more than 20 men stormed both Benjamin Whitting and John Quigley's room where they were staying and beat both men before chasing them out of town. <laughs> and declared that the state, excuse me, that the New Hampshire House of Representatives publicly does recognize the importance of this rebellion and honor these men who helped shape the early beginnings of our independence and declared by virtue of my signature inscribed below the New Hampshire House of Representatives marks April 14th, 2022 as the 250th anniversary of the Pine Tree Riot and do hereby celebrate its significance in the founding of our country, signed by Sherman Packard, Speaker of the House. This 
one is much, much shorter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still from the heart. <laughs> the New Hampshire Senate, a resolution. Be it known that the New Hampshire Senate extends its congratulations to the Ware Historical Society in celebration of the 250th anniversary of the 1772 Pine Tree Riot. And be it further known that the New Hampshire Senate extends its best wishes for continued success. Does that mean more riots? <laughs> That's up to you. Thank you very much. That's very uh, meaningful. It's, um, it's great that the, the state recognizes this event. Um, we hope that we can educate more people about it all the time. Um, I'd like to introduce Mr. Uh, Jack Manning. He's the past president general of the Sons of America Revolution nationally from 2019 to 2021. Uh, he's a descendant of both Aaron and William Quimby and Ebenezer Mudgett, apparently. So that's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, Mr. Manning would like to uh, offer his greeting from the Sons of the American Revolution. Thank you, Tom. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our state president, New Hampshire Society, Sons of the American Revolution, for even inviting me. I, and I have to be honest, I had never heard of the Pines. Uh, pine tree riots. I, uh, I'm originally from Boston and Quincy, so obviously the Tea Party was our big thing. But as I've studied history, I found out we had the pine tree riots and we had the Gatsby affair down in uh, Rhode Island, all before the Boston Tea Party. So we had better historians down there, I guess. Let's <laughs> go the story. But as Tom said, I'm the immediate past president general of the Sons of the American Revolution. We are a group of men that trace our ancestry back to participants in the American Revolution. Now, I'm predominantly Irish on my father's side, and my mother always used to stress the Yankee side on her family, make sure that we all knew we were part Yankee. And uh, she always said she was eligible for the DAR. So I decided to follow her ancestor back, and uh, sure enough, she was right, but that's when I went to Kingston, New Hampshire, the lady asked me if I was trying to get into the Sons of the American Revolution, and I had said, what's that? And she said, it's like, like the DAR, but it's men. So I was off and running, and I kind of dropped my mother for a while. And, uh, I got myself in first, and then I got my mother and my aunt and everything. But as far as uh, the SAR is concerned, uh, we have a great group of guys up here in New Hampshire. All my patriot ancestors, I have eight of them, come from New Hampshire, so I'm pretty, it's like coming home when I come up here. Uh, Sanborn Lumber Company down the street, uh, I'm a Sanborn too. So I, I point it out to my wife all the time. I say, yeah, I'm related to this family, I'm related to that family. When I get, when I get up here, it's like old home week. Of course, she gets a little upset when I go through graveyards to find family. But uh, it's one of the, the DAR and the SAR are the, the only two organizations I know of where you can talk about dead people and everybody's happy that you found someone. <laughs> wow, that's great, he's dead, yeah, he died. And uh, actually to add to that, uh, my original patriot ancestor from Springfield, New Hampshire, he was born in Kingston, uh, he fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill, he actually died today in 1813, so it's his anniversary, I think that's kind of, to a degree, he's watching from up above. Up above. But uh, it is amazing what we do in the SAR. We have color guards, we have, uh, we're national around. I, I've 
traveled as president general before COVID hit. I was traveling around the country to events similar to this around the country. Uh, we were about 12 miles from Knoxville, Tennessee when we got the call that everything was canceled for two weeks because of COVID, which stretched out to two years. But uh, I will tell you one of the first things that uh, people ask me when Sheila accompanies me is if she's DAR. And her answer is, no, I'm FBI. <laughs> Full-blooded Irish. So she makes that known. But uh, if any of you are eligible for the SAR or the DAR, we'd love to have you. You can find us on the website. Uh, SAR.org is the national website. And uh, you got uh, the New Hampshire website, which is New Hampshire, uh, NHSSAR.org. So we'd love to have you. Uh, and it's great, especially for the children, that we're doing things like this because history is a very important part. I grew up with history. Like I said, I lived in Quincy with the Adamses. Grew up in Boston with all that history. Uh, so it's great to come to these things and I, I want to commend the Weir Historical Society for putting on an event like this. It's awesome. And next month we'll be down at the Gatsby events in Rhode Island. So it's, uh, it's great that you keep the history alive. Uh, especially for our youth. Thank you very much. All right, uh, can you hear me in the back okay? You good? All right. Um, next, I would like to introduce Mr. Carl Soderberg. Carl is a veteran of the U.S. Army who served as a cavalry officer in Iraq and he is co-founder of Abel Ebenezer Brewing Company. So if, you don't, if you're not from the area, that, that name really does still ring true though. He's gonna talk a little bit about that. Oh. Thank you guys very much. Uh, like Tom said, I'm uh, Carl Soderberg, one of the founders of Abel Ebenezer Brewing down in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Uh, I consider us, even though we're a brewery, we're one of the keepers of the story. This is a story we tell at our bar every day. Um, so thank you to Tom, the Ware Historical Society, and to all of you guys for coming out and making this event uh, possible, because to echo the last speaker, history is very important. I mean, history is really the all-encompassing topic uh, that affects all of us, and it's important to keep these stories alive. Uh, Tom really wanted me to talk about what this story uh, meant to me and uh, kind of why we decided to name our, our business after Ebenezer Mudgett and the, uh, the Pine Tree Riot. And that actually goes all the way back uh, to when I was a young officer or aspiring officer in the Army. At the Officer Candidate School uh, in Fort Benning, Georgia, it's actually, uh, it is a ton of field training and it's very tough, but there's also a lot of classroom training, which a lot of people don't know. Uh, there are military uh, professor, military history professors on the staff at the infantry school at Fort Benning. Uh, so we spent a lot of time in the classroom studying very small pieces of history like this that they don't teach in classrooms today um, in the schools. Uh, and this is one of those stories. And the reason why they do that is uh, the military believes in teaching their young officers the full context of everything that happens that leads up to certain events. Uh, like the Boston Tea Party was not a spontaneous event and probably would not have happened had the men in where New Hampshire not stood up to fight for their pine trees. And you know, that might sound silly in today's context, but back then timber was the oil of the day. That was how people here in the frontier, this was the frontier at the time, uh, that's how they made their living. Um, so fast forward to today. Uh, this, it's not so much that this story, so Tom asked me, you know, talk about how much this story means to me. It's really the story of America that means a lot to me. And that story within the full context of, you know, America's history of civil disobedience and revolution started here. Uh, civil disobedience wasn't new in 1772, but it always went very severely punished in over a century. Uh, this was the first instance where they got away with it, where the judges here in the colonial court system agreed with the locals and where, and that made national news across the colonies. Uh, so much so it started the domino effect of civil disobedience leading up to the Boston Tea Party, the battles of Lexington and Concord, eventually the siege of Boston. Um, and you'll see a lot, this is one of my favorite things about driving through where is all the pine tree flags. Uh, 
because those were the earliest uh, militia flags at the onset of the American Revolution. Uh, the flag of New England, the Bunker Hill flag, and even our first ragtag Navy flag, the Appeal to Heaven flag, all bear the eastern white pine tree as a nod to Ebenezer Mudgett and his pine tree riot. So um, I think events like this really help keep that story alive and really keep the entire context of our great country, America, all that fun stuff. So again, thank you guys very much for coming out. I'll leave you guys with thanks, cheers, and taxation is theft. <laughs>
and how the journey from one flag to the other changed, I think, the world and, and civilization in this world, um, thanks to the United States, you know, forming and what it, what it has done for the world. Um, as early as 1690s, New Hampshire was nothing but wilderness. And King William of England immediately claimed all the white pine trees of 24 inches and above for the, for the king, for the Royal Navy, to be used as masts. And as Carl mentioned, timber was the oil of the day. Nations fought and competed over timber. And by that time, the early 1600s, England was already virtually deforested. They had used it all up. And they saw New England as a big bounty of of pine in taxes as more and more people came you know those two the new england was really i think considered a uh, a bit of a breadbasket and revenue stream for great britain um in 1722 king george decided that he wanted to tighten that law to 12 inches he wanted to preserve what was left and make some more money off of it and that's Basically, the fines and the levies and the, and the restrictions um, were for the benefit of, of the king, essentially. Um, that law was really lightly enforced, but in 1767, Governor John Wentworth decided to take action and start fining and putting that law into heavy enforcement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to visualize what that tightening of that law was. A lot of times you hear the numbers, but you don't really see it. And I wanted my buddy Rob here is going to hold up a 24 inch, roughly, white pine tree. Okay? That's the size that you were restricted to. And the number on there, yeah, 378. Okay. What is that number? Using Blodgett's rule at the time, or the New Hampshire rule, there was a calculation of how many board feet of pine you would get out of a 10 foot length, or any length. 24 inch pine tree so with a 10 foot length of tree at 24 inches you would get 378 board feet out of that tree using Blodgett's rule some of you might know the name Blodgett he was in he was involved in the pine tree ride as well the 12 inch restriction brought that down to what is it 95 you see that number 95 so that's a 75 percent reduction in the amount of board feet you could get out of a tree on your property 24 inches to 12, that's half, but it's more than that. So, and that 12 inch tree is pretty, pretty small. So that restriction really hurt. That really um, created a dent in the livelihood of, of people here. So you can put that down now, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> Thanks, thank you. When, when I went to a ceremony one year and I saw that, I said, I have to show people that because that visualization is really powerful. So 250 years ago this week, a group of men from where took action to defend their liberties, their rights to private property, self-determination, and a legitimate voice in their own government. In their world, law enforcement, the courts, the legislature, the entire system of government all answered to one person, the King of England. They were all picked by the king's agents. They were the king's agents. Everything acted in the behalf, going as a funnel up to the king of England. And they had no means to appeal their grievances. And the restrictions were tightening even further. Um, I'm going to point out Hillsborough County Sheriff Chris Conley here. I want to juxtapose the role of the sheriff in 1772, 1722 to the role of sheriff today. Do you know that the Hillsborough County Sheriff is elected here? He's an elected official. He's not appointed. It's not a, it's not a patronage job. It's not a, uh, a royal decree. It's a, it's, we, we elect the sheriff. He's a constitutional officer, and he's, his job is to protect the rights, the constitutional rights of the, of the residents of the county. Complete opposite direction of what the job of the sheriff was in 1772. He, he protected the best interests of the King of England. And so I, uh, I, asked, I asked Sheriff Conley to come out and, uh, and he's, he's a bit of a prop for me, but I, uh, he's, he's what we want a sheriff to be. You know, not, not what the sheriff was in, the, in those days during the Pine Tree Riot. 
And, uh, and he, he agreed to come, and uh, I'm glad he took the invitation. He's also a history buff, he said, so uh, I think this is, this is a double win. So they took their grievances down the path. The only path that they had then was they appealed to heaven, and that's what that flag is all about. That flag came out a little later, but essentially what they were doing was is they were taking a risk, and they were throwing caution to the wind to act in the name of what was right. And they had no means to appeal to anybody, really, about their grievances and the restrictions that they were put upon them. The example they set, pushing back on this tyranny, would help set the stage for others in New England and beyond to do the same over the, over the following years, to fight their way out of colonial status as subjects into becoming the sovereigns themselves. The king was the sovereign in those days. They, that's the, another name for the king as a sovereign. Well, now we, the people, are the sovereign. It's completely flipped around for the better. And the, the people that acted in the Pine Tree Riot, we have them to thank for taking an early example and putting their families, their fortunes, their well-being at risk for what they did. It turned out good, and we're glad for that. It could have turned out a lot worse for them, and they really, it wasn't a light decision they made, and they really did take a big risk. Now we have rule of law as the standard. Our, our rights are protected by Constitution. We have the right to vote, and we have the option to become a representative in our government if we choose, at any level. They didn't have that option in 1772. So we owe a big debt of gratitude to these men and their families for risking everything. So here's to the Pine Tree Riot and the men from Ware who made it happen. May we never forget what they did, and especially in Ware, may we celebrate it and pass these lessons on to our children. Thank you. So uh, Reverend Akers is going to come up. Uh, he's from the Sons of American Revolution. He's going to give a benediction. Actually, they have an announcement they'd like to make first. So. We have a few awards to give out. Ruth, would you come up, please? So the New Hampshire Society Sons of the American Revolution wish to present our unique challenge coin uh, to, uh, to Sherry and Tom for uh, putting on this great event. On one side is our national seal of the National Society, and the other side is a representation of the statue of General John Stark in Concord, New Hampshire. On the back it reads, live free or die. Death is not the greatest of evils, which is the actual quote from the 1809 lamentation in the letter in response to veterans of Bennington who wrote a letter to General Stark. <laughs> we were supposed to have a plaque uh, to present to the Ware Historical Society, but unfortunately, the U.S. Postal Service decided to delay it. <laughs> so I have a proclamation certificate here. This is a quote from General George Washington to Governor Message Ware, July 26, 1780, in response to a letter regarding New Hampshire's further commitment to the cause and donating gunpowder and supplies to the Army. The particular and spirited exertions of the state of New Hampshire to fulfill the objects which we have in view cannot but meet the warmest applause of every lover of their country. In recognition of his many years of dedicated service to the preservation and promotion of New Hampshire's colonial and revolutionary war era heritage, 
as well as his perseverance in coordinating with other entities for the organizing of this 250th anniversary celebration of the historical Pine Tree Riot at Ware, New Hampshire. Thomas Flaherty of the Ware, New Hampshire Historical Society is presented the Sons of the American Revolution Bronze Good Citizenship Medal as one of the very first overt acts of rebellion against the English crown, the Pine Tree Riot shall forever be remembered as one of the founding events of American independence. to call up uh, members of our color guard, Doug Wood, they're still here, Doug Wood, Dennis Walsh, Al Lampson, Paul Ford, if they're still here, and uh, Russell Cumbie. This is what happens, we wander. So today I am presenting to each of these gentlemen here the National Society Color Guard Challenge Coin, which is our official challenge coin for our National Color Guard Society. On the front it has Betsy Ross flag with the 13 stars, cross rifles and a tricorn hat on the front. And on the back it has our official 250th anniversary seal for the National Society. Without the hard work of these guys, we couldn't put, put on these events and, and uh, contribute what we do. And these guys are at every single event. So without these guys, without these volunteers, we couldn't be here. So thank you guys. The goal of this group is to attend as many of the 250th anniversaries as they can over the next few years. And we're one of the first ones, so. <laughs> uh, please rise as I give the benediction. Please pray in your faith as I pray in mine. Almighty God, grant us your mercies as we part on this day. In the coming days, help us to reaffirm our roles as citizens of the United States. Keep before us the privations and sacrifices of our ancestors who freely gave themselves in the cause of liberty and democracy. Endow us with their resolve. Strengthen us as we pledge ourselves to the preservation of the freedoms bestowed upon by your hand. Amen. Okay. So we'll see how we're going to do this next one. You can you can take seats if you like. Thank you. Um, we have plans to do an aerial drone photo next. We're right on time too. Uh, is the drone photographer here? We found him. All right, John is here. So, while it's not raining, the plan is for everybody who's here to go into the grassy area right to the next side of this building here, on the other side of this big tree. There's a couple of flags out there. I'd like the, the color guard and the historical society and the descendants to all circle around that center area where the flag is out there. And then for everybody else to go in front of them in a semicircle, the drone is going to take our picture from 
about 40 or 50 feet up, I guess, from over the tennis court area. So that's going to that's gonna help people shepherd out here. I'm going to go stand out at the flag. If you want to be in the drone photo, come with us and we're going to do this. Immediately after the drone photo, we're going to the play the next uh, the first performance of the play will begin in the town hall.